the process for me as production designer on the film Hairspray begins by kind of a trip to the library to start researching Baltimore in 1962. We shot the film in Toronto. There is a kind of spirit to the architecture here and to some of the specific neighborhoods here that even though it was in Baltimore, it was the Baltimore of Hairspray. David Grubman did an enormous amount of research of the era and of Baltimore at that time. The streets of Toronto will be unrecognizable on film. We've created our world. And our world is a world that allows you to sing and dance. I will definitely have that salmon color coming in yeah. and lots of the wood. The most important thing I always think is to be inside the director's head. Adam very much did not want this to look at all like a Broadway musical. He didn't want the look to be exaggerated in any way. He wanted a very real world. I'm ready to go. The rats on it. So stop for a second. So then we cut around, we see the rats, a shot of the rats. The commercial exterior was definitely the hardest of the set, and only because there were so many pieces to that puzzle. There were roughly 60 exteriors which had to be converted to Baltimore, circa 1960. Hi, Dad! Hi. It's my daughter. A major story point is the fact that Wilbur owns a joke store. Because there's a dance number that takes place in here, the first consideration in sort of figuring out the layout of the store was being able to be danceable, and then just fill it with all this wonderful set dressing. The whoopee cushion plays a role in the story. Daddy! It wasn't me. I had to improvise a bed out of something. You've got your uh, vomit, which also is known as glop, and uh, I think that's called doggone it. It's always really fun to kind of go into Edna's world, and Edna's world is laundry. This is the uh, Turnblad backyard. It was just a matter of how we were going to place the laundry lines and play with the ground plan with Adam until we found good traffic patterns for his choreography. We knew we wanted to create a very realistic looking backyard, but at the same time have complete flexibility for Adam and for the cinematographer. So we came up with the idea of flying the scenery out. And now, broadcast live in front of a live studio audience. What we're looking at now is the Corny Collins Show as it's been put together for the Miss Teenage Hairspray competition because the story is really about looking toward the future or decorating it with our sort of space age design elements, the Sputnik light fixtures, the rocket that Tracy arrives on. Adding some sparkle, but keeping it very much the same world of Corny Collins and the same world of our film, which is a very sort of naturalistic, honest feel. Every film has different requirements. This had the added requirement of dealing with choreography. The floor itself was very important. You have to worry about how the dancer's feet moves on the floor. You have to worry about how the floor sounds under their feet. I like to keep things simple so that the words and the actors can tell the story first, not the scenery behind them. You just sort of pay attention to details. And if you have a good construction team and good painters, then hopefully we create the effect. I'd like to think that I'm not so much creating sets as worlds for the story to take place in.